Hi, this is Jamie, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanism in sidereal confluence, which I played for the first time this past weekend. Here's a photo of that game. I played the red faction, because I usually play red in games, but there are, I think, nine, or maybe even more, completely asymmetric factions in the game. At its heart, sidereal, I hope I pronounced that correctly, sidereal confluence is a trading game. And when I think about it, I actually have not played a bunch of trading games. I haven't played many of them at all. The main one that comes to mind is Settlers of Catan, which it's been a while since I played that. But I think a part of the reason that Catan works so well is that you rely on other players to trade for the resources you need right now. Because if you accumulate too many cards in hand, the robber can take those cards away. So there's this pressure to get rid of what you have as soon as possible. That pressure doesn't really exist inside of real confluence. Rather, the, uh, the reason that you trade in this game is you don't make everything you need. There are a bunch of different resources. You can see these cubes up here, a bunch of different types of resource cubes. And these cards convert those cubes into other things. And uh, when they do that conversion, it doesn't happen in a chain form. It happens simultaneously. So it's not like I can convert this card first and then use the things I gained from that card on one of these other cards and then use that for another card. They all happen at once. And you do that six times throughout the game. So you can chain from round to round, but it makes a big difference that that all happens at once instead of chaining within the same round because you're basically gathering things um, these usually typically do not turn into points. Most of these just turn into other cubes. And so the, the main instigator for encouraging players to trade in this game is that you don't make everything you need. And there's stuff that you need right away so that you can convert it into better stuff. And that's where the trading comes in. There's a real-time trading element that you do with the other players. And basically, you can trade anything in the game. You can trade the cubes, the resources. You can trade the cards themselves. You can trade future things that haven't happened yet, but that you will give to the person. Uh, you can't trade victory points. Um, uh, I think there's some other things that I'm missing here that you can trade. But you can trade a lot of different stuff in the game. And uh, there are a couple, th like, I, I'm basically touching upon this greater trading mechanism as my favorite mechanism today, because I, I, I thought it worked so well. There was no downtime at all. We were all engaged constantly. We had these interesting negotiations. Um, and the game actually really helped us determine the value of these things. Sometimes in a trading or, or an auction game, it's hard to tell what the value of something is. But on these cards, it's too t small to see here. But there's a little um, indicator below each trade that shows the value or like the overall value of the thing that you're turning into the other thing, the value of both of those. So you can see, okay, this card is very good. This other card is not as good, or these cubes are really good. These are not as good. Um, there are two other elements of this trading mechanism that I really think are worth mentioning because I think they're pretty cool. One is that all trades are binding. So there's none of this aspect in trading games. And I, I'm not sure of the, many trading games that actually do this, but, um, there isn't an aspect where I can say, okay, I'll, I'll give you uh, a green cube now and I'll give you a green cube next round if you give me a yellow cube now. There is, uh, and, and then once we get to the next round, I just say, no, I'm, not, I'm no longer interested in giving you that green cube. You can't do that. Trades are binding. Um, it's just a little simple rule, but I think it's a, that's a pretty important one. The other thing is that, again, it's a little hard to see, but there are these certain trades, conversions, uh, not trades, conversions, that have a purple background. And that purple background means that the goods that you gain from that conversion are goods that you must trade away. And you can only trade away. You can't use those goods in your, in your, uh, your technology cards. You can't use them. You can't spend them. You can only use them to trade. And if you don't use them to trade, you must give them away to other players. Um, this, I thought, was just a brilliant little touch because... Even among these, these cubes that you've assigned your own values to based on your own engine or what the game tells you they are, suddenly you have this new value quantifier of these cubes that you can't spend on your own. So they're not worth as much as other cubes, but you need to spend them. And so they're kind of just begging to be traded for something. And so it's, it makes an easy target at the beginning of the round where you're trying to figure out, okay, exactly what do I need this round? At the very least, you can say, okay, I see this other player over there has a bunch of cubes in their must trade area. And I have some stuff that I must trade. Why don't we work out a trade between those things? Because we have to trade them or otherwise we'll just have to give them away. I thought that was a really clever touch. And I, I think I, after only one play, I probably only barely touched upon 
upon the surface of how important that element of the game is, the, uh, the must trade element of the game um, for those specific types of, of, of goods. There's a lot I could talk about this game. I've been thinking about it a, a lot since I played it. I, I really, um, really enjoyed it and really thought that the, the overall design was brilliant. There's a lot going on on this table. I mean, this is just a small piece of the table. And I haven't gone to the asymmetry. Even the asymmetry is outlandish and big. And um, and uh, there's a whole rule sheet for every player with their, their asymmetric elements and abilities. But... Uh, but if you're interested in trading games and interaction and games where there isn't a lot of downtime at all, I would highly recommend at least trying Saudi Real Confluence once and, and having that experience and seeing what a trading game can be. Because I, I, I just I learned a lot from playing it. And that's what I love about playing games from other designers and other publishers. So yeah, if you have any thoughts about Saudi Real Confluence, if you have a different favorite mechanism, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Or if you have a, uh, a favorite mechanism in a trading game that really actively encourages people to trade um, and, and reduces that downtime, I'd love to hear about that in the comments as well. Thanks.